All right, premium processing. Let's chat about that, shall we, Sophie? Let's do it. So premium processing, sometimes it's here, sometimes it's not. For the last several, two years actually, um, premium processing has been around, which is wonderful. Yeah, um, since the lottery went electronic, they have more capacity because they don't have to sift through mountains of paper that they'll send back. Right, um, and since the, the lottery went electronic, it's been COVID and USCIS has been needing the extra cash. So right. why shy away from an additional couple of thousand bucks? Right. So what premium processing is, it's an option um, to file an additional form with an additional legal fee that requires USCIS to adjudicate an application. So in this instance, an H-1B application in 15 calendar days. Okay. Currently, premium processing is an additional $2,500 on the legal fee. Um, I'm sorry, on the government filing fee, which the government would be benefiting from. And adjudication does not mean approval. Adjudication could mean, hey, we're going to send you a request for evidence within 15 calendar days. Um, so with that, premium processing is absolutely a good option for some cases. I will say more often than not for our, our initial cap cases that we're filing, we're not going to re recommend that you file with premium processing because if we're filing in the beginning of April, who cares if we get an approval in 15 calendar days because your candidate or you yourself, the foreign national, are unable to start until October the 1st. So unless we're getting towards the end, we're getting like it's mid-September or even early September and we still don't have an approval on an H-1B, that, that's when our team will proactively reach out and say, hey, maybe you should consider premium processing um, because if, if, the case, if October 1 hits and your case is not approved yet, you still can't initiate or have your um, H-1B status effective. Yeah. Um, so I would say... Mm -hmm. Three situations where you might want to consider premium processing. One, mental health. Uh, somebody's really nervous about this. Yeah. Uh, two, candidate is on cap gap seeking a change of status from F1 OPT or STEM OPT to H1B. If it passes October 1st and the H1B has not yet been adjudicated, the candidate will be required to, be, to stay in the US, but their work authorization for cap gap will end on September 30th. So to avoid the situation of somebody being stuck in the US and unable to work, waiting for their H-1B adjudication, it can be good to add in premium processing in September if they don't have it yet. And the third, the third situation is less common uh, in COVID with a decline of consular processing and visa issuance but sometimes premium processing can be helpful if somebody needs to schedule a visa interview abroad for their initial H-1B because they're outside of the United States. Right, and we want them to enter the US on October the 1st um, right. in, in H-1B status. Got it. 